Hello and welcome to the DSP Project, your weekly fix of music production and technology. I'm your host Rupert Brown and this week I'm going to be talking about automating your volume controls inside of Ableton Live, why you shouldn't be doing it with the master fader and, uh, and instead should be using a, a device like Utility to do it instead. But fear not, if you uh, have already gone to all the effort to put in uh, all these great fades and automation to your main faders and you've come to mix down and you're now very frustrated and looking for a solution well I have a uh, I have a solution for you as well there is a way that you can uh, transpose all of that fader information and get you know, basically free up your your main volume faders inside of session view so you can kind of mix down as you probably normally do so without any further ado let's get started okay so here I've got a track that I'm currently working on and first of all I want to give you an example of the problem so let's take the the drum track here the main drum track and I've got the the volume fader mapped to a MIDI controller here so let's say I want to put some automation on this this channel here I might be tempted to just hit the record arm here uh, and push play and record uh, some automation <laughs> Okay, so there's my uh, amazing automation for the for the drop. Now that's all very good, but uh, now when it comes time to mix this track down, and I'm happy with all of the automation I've made uh, on all the volumes. Let's say I want to uh, change the the level of the drums. I decide they're you know a bit too loud. I want them a bit quieter. Um, if we have the the track playing. You'll notice this little uh, red dot here by the um, by the volume fader. This shows us that, that there is some automation applied. So as we hit this part here, now you'll notice as soon as I move that fader, the little dot turns grey. Uh, and also does this red au automation line turns kind of a brown color and it basically shows us that the the automation has been uh, overridden by my manual action so this this raises a problem because I now as soon as I go to adjust, adjust the the level it takes the the automation off, the automation off track so if I hit this button here you see it turn it will turn red again and then it will revert back to following the the automation that's set in this this envelope here um, so this is obviously frustrating because I now can't use this this fader to set the volume even if we're talking about after the the event after the event has happened so when the, in the main part of the track I decide to make the drums a little bit louder like that but as soon as I reset back onto the automation track it's going to revert back to following this uh, this envelope again so now there is a way to move the whole lot and keep the uh, keep the envelope. We can uh, select um, the push control A and can select everything, uh, and then select uh, any one of these points on the envelope, and then we can move the, the whole lot as as one piece. Um, uh, or we could just sort of drag a, a bar over it, highlight it, and then we can move that. So we could use this to sort of add a little bit or subtract a little bit, but it's definitely no, uh, not an enjoyable way to try and mix down a bunch of different tracks. So uh, that's kind of frustrating. So there, initially I thought that the utility was the, the best way to automate it. Um, so what I would do is grab a utility plugin. put it on here and so I'm going to highlight the selection of the envelope that's on the master fader push command backspace to delete that envelope or automation and now I want to automate the gain uh, using my utility so I can just hit uh, record arm again <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so we're now we're now a step closer because the the automation is happening in utility. Uh, it now means that I can basically delete all the automation uh, uh, on the the master fader. So if I stick a mouse button on that and push delete automation to get rid of that little dot, okay, we can now revert back to the original program. And uh, while I still have the the dip in volume that occurs before the drop. I'm free to mix the overall level of the track on the master fader. Okay, so that is um, that's fairly fairly effective, um, but just having a, a play with it for the purpose of this video sort of got me thinking that there is uh, there's one problem with using the utility as a fader is that you can only get minus 35 uh, dB out of it. You basically won't give you uh, a full kind of mute. If you turn it right down, you're still going to have, um, if I push play, it's quite quiet, obviously minus 35 dB, but you still get some sound bleeding through. So it's not going to be perfect for sort of fade, fade to black as it were. Um, so rather than using the utility, it got me thinking, why not use the, the volume fader that perfectly replicates the, the main fader, uh, which appears in the audio effects rack. So if I drop the audio effects rack in here, and open up the chain list here, second mouse button, create chain, and uh, we've got a, a volume control here, which basically has uh, minus infinity to plus 6 dB, which is exactly the same as the fader here, uh, mine sort of does minus infinity up to um, plus 6 dB. Okay, so this is going to work much the same as the uh, as we did with the uh, utility, in the sense that we can just push record arm and then uh, either map a MIDI control or I'm just going to use the mouse. Okay, that was started off at plus six dB. Sorry for that, but uh, you get the idea. So we can we now have a separate volume automation and our master fate it is freed up. Okay, that's fine if you have had the foresight to record all of your uh, volume automation into the audio effects rack. But what if you've already recorded all of your automation into all your tracks, you've come down to mix and now you're stuffed? Well, luckily you're not. Basically, uh, first of all, I'll just quickly draw in some automation onto the main fader again as an example. <laughs> Okay, so there's our there's our uh, envelope there, or automation. What I'm going to do now is second mouse button on the volume control for the audio effects rack for that particular chain, and select Show Automation in New Lane. Okay, and I want to see the so the, I've got a new lane here, which is basically just so we can see multiple. Uh, uh, audio auto, uh, automation at one time, and I'm going to second mouse button on the main fader and select show automation in new lane on the master fader. Okay, so now basically what I want to do is just select the the entire envelope for this track here, which is our master fader. Second mouse button and select copy or, or cut envelope, uh, and now I want to select the automation for the chain volume, second mouse button and select paste. Okay, and so we can see now that the envelope has been copied and pasted from our master fader into our audio effects rack. So now we hit play. So as you can see, we now have all of our lovely automation, our main faders are freed up so that when we get to the end of the production process, we can mix it all down, happy, happy, joy, joy. We also have 
by using the audio effects rack volume as opposed to the utility we have the ability to fade things right to um, complete silence um, another important point to mention why you can't copy the envelope from the um, main fader onto the utility is because the utility goes from uh, minus 35 dB to plus 35 dB. Uh, it means when your fader is, let's say, at the, at the very top here, it's only at 6 dB. Um, whereas if you uh, copy that same envelope that's at the, at the very highest point there, like so here's our, uh, here's our uh, volume, if it's at the very highest point, and you copied and pasted that onto the utility, its highest point is plus 35 dB, so it's going to be ridiculously loud, uh, and obviously the automation is going to be completely incompatible. Uh, and so that's why I'm using the audio effects rack instead. So there you have it. Hopefully that's fairly clear explanation as to why you want to be using the utility device instead of the main faders. And uh, also hopefully I've helped out one person who has put all that effort into automation their main faders then come down came to mix and went oh crap uh, I can't do it anymore so uh, that is this week's episode if you do have any comments on this video please head down to the dspproject.com and leave a message underneath this vid uh, and while you're there if you could also subscribe that really helps us out as well uh, and finally if you want to get a hold of me you can send an email to inbox at the dspproject.com uh, I am currently reviewing um, just a little bit, little sneak peek, uh, the Novation Zero SL Mark II, uh, having a bit of a, a play with that in the lab, so you can expect uh, a review and some info coming in on that very soon. If you do have any questions about that particular device, now is a very good time to ask me. So uh, again, either just leave a comment under this video or inbox at the dspproject.com uh, is an email that will come to me directly. So that is all we've got time for this week, and I'll see you next week.